Time to know the news of the week. I'm Hannah Tabios. This is the MB Rundown. Vice President Leni Robredo said she will keep her post as the anti-drug czar until she is told to resign. This after President Rodrigo Duterte's earlier pronouncement that he does not fully trust the VP after she began talking to foreign organizations critical of his drug war as soon as she assumed her post. The problem with Robredo is this. Right after she was uh, appointed, she began talking publicly about inviting the Human Rights Commission. She was talking to the United Nations. She would want to talk to the European. At marami na siyang sinapinagsasabi. Kung ganun, sabi ko, I cannot appoint her as a cabinet member. But the VP said she will continue on her job in leading the government's anti-illegal drugs campaign, despite Duterte's tirades. Robredo also admitted that she wrote a letter to the chief executive to clarify her mandate as the co-chair of ICOD. It will be recalled that the palace earlier said it could not bring back Robredo to the cabinet as the president felt insulted with Robredo's move. But Duterte maintained that he would not fire Robredo, but she will only be on a need-to-know category. Robredo earlier admitted that her job in ICAD is only limited to policymaking and she has no supervision over the agencies. The Philippine National Police or PNP has ordered a nationwide crackdown on the use of electronic cigarettes or vapes following President Rodrigo Duterte's verbal order. PNP officer in charge, Lieutenant General Archie Gamboa, said he has already directed police commanders to increase police visibility, primarily in the vicinity of schools and other no-smoking public spaces, and to run after the violators. On Tuesday night, President Duterte announced that he would ban the importation and use of vapes in public spaces following a confirmed vape-related illness involving a 16-year-old girl in Central Visayas. However, the president's verbal order has not yet been issued formally as an executive order or memorandum. Senate President Vicente Soto III said the government cannot prohibit the importation or use of vapes without a law declaring it as illegal. In pursuit of peace and development, five local leaders in the western part of Basilan in Mindanao forged an interlocal alliance to strengthen the province's local autonomy. The town mayors of Lantawan, Haji Mutamad, Maluso, Sumisip, and Tabian Lasa established the Western Basilan Alliance, or WBA, as a platform for consultation in areas of mutual concern and benefits such as fisheries, agriculture, peace and security, good governance, education, health, and ecotourism. Maluso Town Mayor Hani Bud said in an interview, the division of the alliance is to have a prosperous and peaceful Western Basilan. To recall, Maluso was once dubbed as the Shabu capital of the province, where the Philippine Islamist separatist group Abu Sayyaf had camps before. Bangsamoro Autonomous Region and Muslim Mindanao or BARM Interim Chief Minister al Haj Murad Ibrahim lauded the efforts of the LGUs and hopes to replicate WBA's blueprint in other parts of BARM in the future. It was an exciting week for all collegiate basketball fans as the Letra Knights and Ateneo Blue Eagles men's basketball teams made history in the finals game of NCAA Season 95 and UAP Season 82. In the historic feat, Letra Knights dethroned the defending NCAA champion San Beda Red Lions on Tuesday's emotional do-or-die game. The 81-79 victory ended San Beda's bid for a fourth straight NCAA title, making Letran capture their first men's basketball championship since 2015. To recall, San Beda had a perfect record of 18-0 during the elimination rounds. Meanwhile, Katipunan emerged victorious in the UAP Men's Basketball Championship after the Ateneo Blue Eagles swept the USC Growling Tigers in Game 2 of Season 82 Finals. With a record of 16-0, the undefeated Blue Eagles completed a second UAAP three-peat, making their graduating senior 30 Ravenna as the league's very first three-time finals most valuable player or MVP. 
The United States unanimously passed a legislation meant to protect human rights in Hong Kong amid the six-month-long violent unrest in the semi-autonomous Chinese territory. The Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act will now be sent to the U.S. House of Representatives, which also recently approved its version of the bill last month. The two chambers will reconcile differences of both bills before U.S. President Donald Trump decides to approve or veto the proposed measure. In a message, Republican Senator Marco Rubio said the move was a clear message to Hong Kongers fighting for their long cherished freedoms. In fact, on the same day, the U.S. Senate also passed the Protect Hong Kong Act, which would prohibit American companies from exporting crowd controlled munitions to Hong Kong police, such as tear gas, pepper spray, and rubber coated bullets. But China's foreign ministry, as well as the Hong Kong government, condemned the legislation, citing that it neglects facts, truths, and blatantly interferes in the region's internal affairs. The series of protests were sparked by the controversial extradition bill that was supposedly sent to suspected criminals in Hong Kong to mainland China for trial. Meanwhile, this are the other top news of the week. Agriculture Secretary William Dar said on Thursday that the government will not stop rice importation despite the earlier order of President Rodrigo Duterte. Rather, Dar said the country will impose stricter rice import requirements such as the issuance of sanitary and phytosanitary import clearances. It will be recalled that the United States Department of Agriculture said in a report that the Philippines will emerge as the world's top rice importer by the end of the year beating China. The Health Department on Wednesday confirmed three new cases of polio in Mindanao, bringing the total of new cases this year to seven. In a statement, DOH said the samples from the three new cases came from the Research Institute of Infectious Diseases and the National Institute of Infectious Diseases, Japan. All three patients were admitted to the Cotabato Regional Medical Center. The DOH then urged all parents and caregivers to vaccinate their children. The Transportation Department will now allow traditional jeepneys to operate beyond June 2020 as long as they are still roadworthy and its operators will express their intent to modernize their units. The department, however, clarified that the government's PUV modernization program will still push through. Let's take a quick recap of the MB Rundown for today, November 22. Vice President Lenny Robredo says she will keep her post as the anti-drug czar until she is told to resign. Philippine National Police or PNP orders nationwide crackdown on the use of electronic cigarettes or vapes following President Rodrigo Duterte's verbal order. Five local leaders in Western Basilian Province forge alliance in pursuit of peace and development. Letter Knights and Ateneo Blue Eagles made history in collegiate basketball championships and United States Senate unanimously approves the bill protecting Hong Kong human rights and democracy. And that's the MB Rundown. I'm Hannah Tabios.